This is San Diego News Daily. I'm Monica Dean. Let's get right into your top local stories right now. New information on the LA County Sheriff's deputy who was killed in an ambush in Palmdale. We now know a person has been detained in connection with that manhunt. Earlier surveillance video captured around the time of the shooting shows a car pulling up to Ryan Klinkenberg's SUV Saturday evening and then taking off. It was a civilian who eventually found the deputy inside his car. That deputy was an eight year veteran of the sheriff's department and a third generation deputy. He also had gotten engaged to his girlfriend four days before that fatal attack. We'll have more updates from the conference later today on NBC 7 News at four. Gas prices are climbing at their fastest rate all year and some San Diego drivers they are struggling to keep up. You may be one of them. Well, right now the average price for a gallon of regular gas in our county is $5.85. That's up 33 cents from last week and inching closer to last October's record high of $6.43. Drivers tell us they have to make financial sacrifices to fill their tanks up. And I've noticed recently it'll be 90, $95 just to fill up my tank every week and a half or so. So it starts to add up quickly and on the way to the grocery store now and you fill up and then you start thinking twice about some of the nicer grocery items I might have been planning on, things like that. So why are prices so high? AAA says maintenance issues in regional refineries and increased global crude oil prices have put pressure on prices. He says Southern California does not have gas pipelines, so when refineries have issues or go offline, the state's inventory is reduced, causing prices to go up. Meantime, California is suing big oil companies and saying they knowingly contributed to climate change. As a result, companies like Shell and Chevron may have to pay hefty fines, plus set up a fund for future climate disasters. California is joining 40 other states and cities like Imperial Beach in that lawsuit. These guys have been lying since the 50s, the 60s, the 70s and 80s. They knew and they knew what to do about it to make sure we didn't do anything meaningful about it. We're living as a consequence in the world that I'm living in where the hots are so much hotter, the dries are so much drier, the wets are so much wetter. Third year of a drought week two later, I'm now in the second, third week of the wettest three weeks in California history. California is the largest economy now suing big oil and the first oil producing state to pursue charges. Five Americans wrongfully imprisoned in Iran for years have been released as part of a prisoner exchange. The agreement gives Tehran access to $6 billion in oil revenues frozen under U.S. sanctions. NBC's Josh Lederman has the latest from Doha, Qatar, where the plane with those freed prisoners landed earlier today. Five Americans detained for years in Iran are now on their way to freedom. A senior diplomat in the region briefed on the prisoner swap tells me that a plane departed Iran carrying those five Americans as well as two of their relatives and a Qatari ambassador. They are said to be in good health, but they will have a long road to recovery ahead after years spent for the most part in Evin prison, a notorious detention center in the Iranian capital of Tehran. This exchange following years of painstaking negotiations between the U.S. and Iran, with Washington agreeing to release five Iranians who are, we are told, were detained on nonviolent crimes, three of them planning to stay in the U.S. after being released, two of them planning to come here to Qatar. The U.S. also agreeing to unlock $6 billion in Iranian oil revenues that had been frozen due to U.S. sanctions. Josh Letterman, NBC News, Doha, Qatar. Meteorologist Brooke Martell joins us now with a look at this drizzly forecast. Hi, Brooke. Hey there and happy Monday. I'm NBC7's Brooke Martell taking a look at your future weather pattern with the wind speeds and the cloud cover. We started off this morning with some drizzles, some mist over the inland valleys and definitely along the coastline. By your afternoon, expect some breezy westerly to northwesterly winds along the coast, anywhere from about 15 miles per hour to 20 miles per hour. But we could also get those conditions picking up over your inland valleys, as well as your mountain communities, even your desert region. Later on tonight, we'll get the return of cloud cover. All right, thank you, Brooke. You could soon be shelling out more to pay your water bills. Why the San Diego City Council says new rate hikes are necessary. And a popular tourist destination in La Jolla could soon be closed year round. Why San Diego lawmakers are considering it. That's coming up. Stay with us. 
NBC7 and Telemundo 20 Response is dedicated to helping you. You guys were able to get a different result. I have so much gratitude. Whether it's in Spanish or English. We're one team. One team. Investigating, getting answers, making sure every phone call, every email gets a response. Because this isn't just our job. This is our community too. And we're here to help. NBC7 and Telemundo 20 Response. One team fighting for you and your money. This is San Diego News Daily. I'm Monica Dean. Welcome back. If you're a fan of the sea lions at Point La Jolla, well, listen to this. Today, the San Diego City Council will vote on whether it will be closed year round. The area is already closed off through October 31st during pupping season. The California Coastal Commission voted last week to recommend a year round closure, citing the need to protect wildlife and the thousands of people who visit the area. You could soon have to pay a whole lot more on your water bill. The San Diego City Council is considering a major rate hike of nearly 20% for water customers tomorrow. It comes after a comprehensive analysis of the city's water system's overall finances. The hikes would be incremental, with the first jump of 10.2% taking effect in just three months. Another 8.7% increase would take effect January 2025. City officials say they need additional revenue to cover rising costs for imported water, aging infrastructure, and salary increases for city water workers. San Diego's homeless crisis is one of our region's biggest challenges, and some new data shows the number of people on our streets just continues to grow. Just in the last month, about 1,400 people became homeless for the first time. That's nearly 300 more than just a month ago. Some businesses say the issue is spilling into their communities. I guess they're moving them out, so, but I've noticed a lot more homelessness that actually um, probably very high on drugs or alcohol there to the point that I had an in, um, encounter with the lady they had the scalpel kind of like a knife thing that pointed at me so at that point I cannot do anything. According to the Regional Task Force on Homelessness, 80 to 85 percent of people experiencing homelessness became homeless while living in San Diego. Still ahead today on the News at 5, we'll outline a new ballot measure you'll get to vote on in March. Supporters say it could help curb the homeless crisis. Catalytic converter theft is on the rise. That's according to Chula Vista Police. And to help curb the problem, the department has started the Engrave and Save Service. They use specialty engraving tools to put VIN numbers on catalytic converters to deter theft and make thieves think twice. The department started the free program a while back when catalytic converter thefts were at an all time high. You can sign up for the service so when the department holds an engraving event, they will reach out to you. They're marked with a high visible paint just to let those thieves know that you're going to have a hard time getting rid of this catalytic converter and specifically those components inside. Um, so move on, basically. The engraving service is free. You must be a Chula Vista resident and the car receiving the service must be registered in your name. Meteorologist Brooke Martell will have a look at your weather forecast right after this. NBC7 and Telemundo 20 deliver forecasts that are not just accurate, but the most accurate, los más acertados, in San Diego. San Diego's biggest team of meteorologists with the most advanced technology delivering the updates you need when you want them in English y en Español because San Diego weather is more than just 75 and sunny and when changes are on the way our first alert weather team is here to help you prepare NBC 7 and Telemundo 20 first alert weather Happy Monday, taking a look at your daytime highs, cooler temperatures on tap right around those low to mid 70s on this last Monday of the summer season before fall kicks off on Friday. We have 70s over your inland valley communities as well. Expect the cloud cover to linger through the morning into your afternoon, especially for the coastline, even for portions of your mountain communities as well. Daytime highs over the desert region sitting right around those upper 90s. We also will have a breezy afternoon. Thank you, Brooke. Look at this handsome face. The Oceanside Police Department held a retirement party for K-9 Jenko this weekend. The seven-year-old Belgian Malinois helped find 200 suspects. He has over six years of service. His most recent partner of two years says, without a doubt, he saved me and other officers from being injured multiple times. Hats off to you, Jenko. More coverage you can count on at NBC7.com. Thanks for watching. Have a great day.